それでは貴様の処刑を始めようか。七つの傷の男俺の大事な弟を再びあの暗闇に引き戻すなら先に俺を殺してからにしろよかろうこの世で俺より強い奴はいない
everyone, it's Kay. I hope you enjoyed the Feast of the Anime Guardians there in the Kenshiro AG. I had a lot of fun making this video. I was asked if I could revive the Bob AG build by Erika again. So I spent a lot of time theory crafting different gear combinations and decided on Abyssus and Facebreaker to scale the damage. Testing the build was really funny because it kills the bosses in a couple of punches. It reminded me of Hokuto no Ken, which is called Fist of the North Star in Western countries. It's a really famous anime in my country. Even people who haven't watched it know Kenshiro is the strongest. So I call this the Kenshiro AG build. In the next part of the video, I will go over the gear and gems, the passive tree, and how the build works. This video is also a preview for the new format I will use for the 3.12 build guides. First, I'll talk about Kenshiro's gear. The most important items are Abyssus and Facebreaker. These two items give a huge amount of damage, especially on a crit. Cotton Soul gives more cold damage, and Dark Ray Vectors gives an extra frenzy charge. Lastly, Rathcow's pet gives 5% life regen and increased damage. As Kenshiro only needs his fist to punish bosses, there's no weapon. For my body armor, I use a legacy armor with main support to get 15% more physical damage. Unfortunately, this mod is no longer available. It's also corrupted for plus one gem. The sixth link for bossing is Anime Guardian, Minion Damage, Death Mark, Melee Physical Damage, Elemental Damage, and Mud Strike, which I swap to Melee Splash when running to the boss room. For this build, I chose Draw Wands as that gives the most damage. As always, the most important mods are Minion Damage and Minion Gem level. Other mods are just extra goodies. Wand 1 has Frostbomb Link to Assassin's Mark and Awakened Curse on Hit to get Draw Curse. This is safe cast, so no trigger craft here. Wand 2 has the trigger craft, and I used the Legacy Temple Wand because it had a high minion damage roll. The gems are the secret link to Spell Cascade, and I have unlinked Flesh Offering. For the helmet, I used Devouring Diadem to get two auras and skitter bots. Hatred and Foul Haste are linked to Generosity to give a big damage boost. And skitter bots don't need to be linked. For the gloves, I used Triad Grip to convert all physical damage to elemental. I wanted to use all green sockets for 100% cold conversion, but that gave me one useless green socket. So I used 3 green and 1 blue. The gems are Dash, Face Run, Second Wind, and Convocation. The boots are for the support minions, and I'm using my Legacy Plus One Spectre on slot boots. I'm using a Carnage and a Horse Chieftain to give power and frenzy charges. The Carrion Golems give a lot of flat physical damage and help with map clearing. The gems are Carrion Golem, Ray Spectre, Feeding Frenzy, and Black Magic. For the accessories, the amulet has Hunter and Warlord influence with plus one to strength and physical gems. I chose this because the AG is a strength gem with physical tag. The rare ring is a well rolled Vermilion ring with minion speed craft. Profan Proxy converts my chilling skitter bots into an elemental weakness curse aura. Lastly, I'm using a well rolled Stygian Vice to give life and resist. Here is the passive tree and ascendancy. It's a modified version of my double cluster passive tree with three main differences. Firstly, Golem Commander increases the added physical damage from the carrion golems. 
Secondly, I anointed the amulet with influence to increase the effect of auras. Lastly, indomitable army buffs the Aegis defenses and reduces bleed damage. For the ascendancy, I'm using Commander of Darkness, Unnatural Strength, and Plague Ringer. The jewel socket and the Stygian Vice have ghastly eye jewels with added physical damage and some other bonus mods. For the clusters, two large jewels with renewal, feasting fiends, and vicious bite. Four medium jewels with vengeful and priestess commander. Three small jewels with surging vitality. And one fortress confidence at the top. Now, I will briefly go over how the build works. Firstly, I scaled the base damage by increasing the Aegis gem level and adding lots of flat face damage. So the Aegis starts with a base 218 to 330 face damage. Next is total increased and total more. This is where Face Breaker adds a massive 800% more damage. The AG now has about 120 to 180,000 fist damage. And then Trial Grip converts the fist damage to cold and lightning. In addition, Cotton Soul and Hatred give extra cold damage. For the elemental damage, there's more scaling with elemental damage, hatred, and various buffs debuffs. Now the AG has about 1.3 to 2 million damage. Lastly, crit scaling takes the AG to an average hit of 4.4 million damage. And the attack speed gives the AG almost 26 million DPS, which is why it could kill Mina in about 1 second. Overall, through crafting and putting this build together was so much fun. Watching the AG3 hit endgame bosses was so funny because everyone just uses an AG to carry Kingmaker or Dying Breath. I think it's actually possible to make this into a viable build. I made this a glass cannon to push the DPS as much as possible, but a balance of DPS and survivability could work. And I think there are ways to improve the build too. Okay, I hope you enjoyed Fist of the Animate Guardian staring the Kenshira AG. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, bye!